There is a difference between experience and history. Often, it's the difference between failure and triumph. In the last 12 months, Rafael Nadal has faced both, each with its own residue and its own result. A year ago, here, he played two matches that would highlight most careers. Nadal played them in two days. First, Fernando Verdasco in the semi. Five hours, 14 minutes, five sets. It started January 30th. It ended on the 31st. When it was over, Nadal's reward was Roger Federer. In a venue where he'd never won, in near total fatigue, in another five-set test, Nadal had every reason to wilt. He didn't. He won instead, reducing Federer to tears, raising his game to a new standard. In 20 Grand Slam starts, he'd already won six titles. That was the history, but the experience was coming. After winning five titles in the first five months of 2009, Nadal began to wear down. His style of play, all out, every point, all the time, was breaking his body. Struggling with tendonitis in both knees at Roland Garros, a place where he'd never lost, he failed in the fourth round. The king of clay had fallen to the dust, and it would take some time to get up. Just six months from his win in Melbourne, Nadal never struck a ball at Wimbledon. Unable to defend the title he fought so hard to gain a year before. When the fortnight was over, so was his 46-week reign at world number one. By August, he was number three. He came to the hard courts of the U.S. Open determined, but still damaged. Through grimace and grit, he reached the semis, but no farther. The Grand Slam season that started with an exclamation ended with a question. Could Nadal be again what he was before? A new year, a new season, with all its promise all its resolution. He is back in Melbourne to remind others and perhaps himself of that difference between the pain of experience and the pride of history. But will this year be different? We find out, and so does he, now.